Welcome to My Watches with Ben. Today's a little bit different. I'm gonna do like everybody else and do a state of the collection. I've got a ton of watches I'm gonna go through, so I'm gonna go through them very quickly. There are four watch boxes organized in themes. So I'll just show you the watch, maybe say a few things I like and move on to the next watch. If I've reviewed the particular watch on the channel at any point, there'll put, be a seal like this that'll pop up that'll tell you that I reviewed it. And you can look in my description if you want to actually see the full review. So that's it. Enjoy. State of the Collection 2023. The first box I'm calling Utility. It's got some pilot watches. It's got some field watches. It's got some like camping style watches. First one is the San Martin Type 20 homage. This is kind of World War II era. And it is a 45 millimeter. So this is an homage of the Zenith Extra Special. There's no plate on the side or anything. San Martin is pretty classy in how they do things, and they don't try to just match everything exactly. They try to do their own thing a little bit. This is an extremely high quality watch. San Martin did a great job. It should have something on the back that's unfortunate. The loom is outrageous. It is disgustingly good. It puts every other watch to shame. Um, here, let me show you the clasp, San Martin. The band is really nice. This one is the Laco Aachen, Aachen being a town in Germany or city. It's a World War II style pilot watch again. I picked this Laco up from Watch Gang. It's a really good buy. It looks beautiful for the and for the price. It's amazing what you're getting here. As a 39 millimeter, it's really kind of small for this type of watch. Um, if I had to do it over again, I would probably have gotten the 42 on this one. It's kind of funny because later I'll show you Hamilton Khaki that I got a 42 of that's too big. And then this one I got is a little bit dinky. It came with a NATO strap, which I didn't like. So I swapped it out for this aviation style strap. The blues don't match exactly, but I think it's okay. This is the Citizen Promaster Altacron. I'm trying to get the green here. It's hard to see in this lighting. It's got a green dial. Hopefully you'll see more clearly on the wrist. This is a 47 millimeter hiking watch. It's supposedly a pilot watch, but I think it's more better for hiking. You've got the compass bezel. This is a really cool watch. Uh, it shows you your altitude. So I'm at 5,000. I haven't calibrated this, so who knows where it's gonna end up. Okay, 5,200 something. That's not exactly right for where I'm at probably, but pretty darn close. And then it has a pretty cool compass. It's a very big watch. I've tried other straps with it, but this one is actually the best right here. The strap is very comfortable. Compass, that's pretty good. Yeah, north is, north is, is that way. It's pointing north, good job, watch bidirectional friction fit bezel. That's it. This is the AV8 Avon Hawker Hunter. It's a pilot chronograph and it is 45 millimeters. I picked this AV8 up purely for looks. It looks really cool. It's got a nice blue anti-reflective coating there. Um, unfortunately, the hands don't really align where they're supposed to. Or rather, you can see the, the minute subdial there is kind of permanently set at six after. It keeps gravity or whatever keeps knocking it. I've, I've looked all over trying to find out how to totally reset the minute counter, and in my opinion, it can't be done. So this chronograph just always kind of sucks, unfortunately. There's no minute track. That's annoying, too. You get cause, Because of the tachometer, how they did this, there's no minute track. There's a lot of really cool stuff with this watch though. Three dimensional elements going on there. Check out my full review. This is the Hemel Airfoil. It is a 42 millimeter retro pilot chronograph. This was another nice watch gang pickup. I like the blue and black. I wanted just black and black, but this is all they had. And actually I'm kind of glad 
But anyway, it's got the ST19, which is really cool. The crown, unfortunately, is tiny and it makes it really annoying to wind this. So that was a, I really wish the crown was bigger. Just maybe double the size would be perfect. Like double how far it sticks out. It's really cool movement and I like the retro styling on this one. This is the original strap it came on. The strap is very high quality. You can see ceramic bezel. If you have Watch Gang, I recommend getting this one. Slot is empty. It's the Columbia Cross Trails, 42 millimeter field watch. Very basic, bezel doesn't turn. And here's a cheap watch. It, it's really not that great. I still kind of like it though. I like the style of it. This is just a fixed on bezel, so that really irks me. They've got like a dive style counter here and everything, but nothing can move. I just really wish that if that, that one thing was fixed, I would really, really enjoy this one. But as it is, it's just kind of disappointing. This is the Timex Vietnam Camper. It's a Timex Camper. It's, it looks like a Vietnam field watch. It is 36 millimeters. This one has a bit of a story. I played a Pops concert once where we did John Williams music. So we had um, Raiders of the Lost Ark. And they asked us to dress up. And so I dressed up as Indiana Jones. And I thought, what would Indiana Jones wear for a watch? If he wore a watch. Because he actually didn't in the movies. They didn't give him a watch. Um, and I thought, you know, he'd probably wear a little field watch. And so I know this, this, is, a, this is the Timex Vietnam camper. It's styled to look like what was worn in Vietnam, but it's a quartz. Yeah, I think, I think this is the kind of watch he would have worn. Indiana Jones is before Vietnam, the Vietnam War, but it's uh, it's going to get all scuffed up. It's going to get beat up pretty badly, even if I don't wear it very much, but this is a really cool one. Here's the Hamilton Khaki. It is an everyday watch or a field watch, however you want to think of it. It is 42 millimeters. Very cool dial, there's a lot going on. It's got that ETA 2824 movement. So for under 400 bucks, that's pretty cool to get a Swiss movement. And let me throw it on the wrist. This is the 42 millimeter. I think the 38 millimeter would be a better size for 99% of, of men for this watch. I think the 42 is too big. It just looks silly to me, but I still enjoy wearing this. It's not crazy, but I would prefer the 38 on this style of watch. Very classy. Here's the Epoch 7019G. It's a tactical field watch with, with a ridiculous number of tritium tubes. And I got this one because I was really into tritium. And if you want tritium, you're sure going to get it with this one. There are how many? 63 tritium tubes on this thing. Yeah, every single marking on the dial plus the hands. So 63 tritium tubes, which is crazy. And the colors are really nice. At the time, there were a lot of color options available. Now I think you can't quite get as many options on this one. but. So this is basically a field watch. It's 43 millimeters, so it's kind of big. I'll put it on so you can see. It looks really tactical. It's got 100 meters water resistance. That's pretty sweet. And then on the back is this Miyota. It's just a plain Miyota movement, really, but they it's the gilt version, so it looks pretty cool to be all gold looking. It's the Detroit Mint Mechanic really kind of the only real racing watch I have. It's 40 millimeters. This is a bullhead chronograph from microbrand Detroit Mint. It has a Valjoux 7750. It's not made by Valjoux, it's a, it's a clone, but that particular movement, the Valjoux 7750, is a workhorse automatic chronograph movement. So I don't think there's any other way you're gonna get an automatic chronograph movement for this price. $408 is what I paid. And it's a really stylish watch too. The strap is really incredible. It's 
really well made strap. Let me show it on wrist. Here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. And here's the Casio fishing gear. Tells me how many fish you can catch. Apparently, pretty good number right now. You can see the moon is in, uh... oh, it's a new moon. We're in the new moon when there's no moon. And there's, the fishing is like moderate at this time. The strap, I'll show it on wrist. The strap is ridiculously, I don't understand why they did this. The strap has a double pin system. So double secure, I guess. But the strap has these little bumps here, which are really uncomfortable. It doesn't feel great. So I will probably get one of these. You can buy these aftermarket little lug extenders because this is like a 14 millimeter width lug bar here. So you have to get one that extends it so you can have a normal size strap on there. I will probably do that at some point because this strap is, it looks fine, but it feels really uncomfortable. And I believe these are plastic here too. So I would like something a little sturdier for that. It's a real cool looking watch though. And here are the dive watches. There's some in here that really aren't dive watches like this one and this one. Um, <laughs> this one was supposed to be a dive watch. No crystal, you can't really go diving with it, right? So anyway. First one is the Rectangula Zaku. It's a 57 millimeter dive watch, and this one is in titanium. The Rectangula came on a silicone strap that I found extremely uncomfortable, so I put it on a bracelet. It's got a very gritty and hard to turn bezel. Lots of loom on this thing. Um, and of course, it's got a really cool case back. If you like Gundam, um, you probably know what any of this stuff is. Very cool. I have a review of it. Let me show it to you on my wrist. There it is. It's not too big, even though it's 52 millimeters with the shroud. It's a lot less with just the dial. I think it's 45 or something. Can't remember exactly, but yeah. It's a big boy, but feels good. The case is titanium and the shroud is aluminum. So it's actually a lot lighter than you would think. And on the steel bracelet, it's really well balanced. Here's the Aragon M50. It's a 50 millimeter dive watch. It's got some great tritium. This is the beastliest watch I could ever imagine wearing. I know that there are chunkier watches out there, but oof, it's hard to imagine. This is literally 11 ounces, I believe. So that is... 4, 8, 12, 16. It's three quarters of a pound, almost three quarters of a pound. This is a very, very heavy watch. Um, it is a 50 millimeter diameter watch. The tritium is really where you get your money's worth on this one. The tritium is so cool. It's got a very chunky bracelet here that's chunky all the way around. It's five millimeters thick, all the links are. But yeah, you've got this cool 420 crown. Really like this one. And here's the Pagani design. This is a dive GMT watch with that left-hand drive. This is nicknamed Sprite. At least the Rolex is nicknamed Sprite. And this one is 41 millimeters. And here's the Sprite. I just got this one because it was so freaking cheap. This was $46 for a GMT watch. So I picked it up. It's got the Ming Zhu movement. So it's not the Seiko NH34. I actually thought it was a 34 when I bought it. I thought this is a screaming deal. It's not quite so screaming when you get the Ming Zhu, but there it is. It's on the Jubilee. It's a GMT movement. I don't really know what else to say about it. Obviously, it's a blatant ripoff of Rolex. There you go. As you can probably see, there's a goal here to have a rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Yellow's the odd one out. I've just got the Sprite hanging out here for no reason. But um, I have an idea for the yellow. I want to get the Van Banner Parking Master. It's got the count up timer instead of the count, or sorry, it's got the count down timer instead of the count up timer. And it just looks so cool. I would love that one. If I can't, it's out of stock. I don't know when they'll ever have it again. So 
I could see myself getting a different watch here for the yellow. Here's my modded Pagani Design uh, Submariner homage. And Rolex doesn't do this combo, I don't believe. But it's green and gold, so it's the nickname The Wall Street. It's 41 millimeters. And this is a mod. I won't say it's the first mod because I tried to mod something else and I messed it up horribly. I tried to mod an Invicta and give it a purple, purple dial and like a gold bezel insert and it failed miserably. Um, this mod actually worked, so I changed out the dial. Pagani, this is a Pagani design. The dial that was on it was a sunburst, so I changed it to a matte. I thought a matte dial looked a lot better. And I changed the handset here, so I have the this arrow hands with the trident hand. Really liked that. And I think it looks a lot better that way. I like that I've, I modded this. It has an Invicta movement in it because I messed up the original. Um, I didn't mention this before. The other two Paganis that I have just have horrible, absolute, absolute garbage clasps. This one is good. This one's okay. But yeah, with the clasp, with the extension here, if I had gotten the Pagani OP first with with the messed up clasp, I wouldn't have gotten another Pagani. Or if I had gotten the uh, Sprite first, I wouldn't have gotten another Pagani. This one is good. So I got one for three. One for three of these has a good clasp. Did I already show you? There it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. And here is the Citizen Whale Shark. It's in titanium. Another dive watch, 47 millimeters. I got this because, well, I was actually saving up for a more expensive watch. And that more expensive watch just kept going up in price. And I thought, eh, maybe I don't want it. So I picked up this uh, Whale Shark instead. I'd wanted this for a while. And so I just picked it up a little bit earlier. And it's very nice. I have a review on this on my channel. Let me show you what it looks like on the wrist. This is an EcoDrive Quartz Titanium watch. I made this a little tight, but you can see what it looks like. There it is. There's the Signum Cuda. It is a GMT dive watch. A fully loomed dial. This one is also in titanium. I got this to be the purple. That purple loom really enchanted me. I thought the orange would be nice, but at that time I already had the Aragon. So I felt like I couldn't get the Signum orange. You know, if I had to go back, if I could go back in time, um, Aragon actually makes a purple. I think I would rather have the purple Aragon and the orange Signum. So I think I would have rather had the, the orange one for the, because that orange loom, if you ever see Signum's pictures, if you see people post pictures of their Signum Cuda with the orange, it's awesome. It's a unidirectional bezel. It should be bidirectional. I have a review of this watch, so I talk about some of my other grievances, but it's full titanium, including the bracelet, which feels so amazing. If you've never tried a titanium watch, Oh, you should, because especially with the titanium bracelet, it feels so good. It is such a big difference. And here's the Spinnaker Hunley. It is a 42 millimeter watch. It's on my Samsung Galaxy strap, actually. I thought I couldn't do the leather. I thought the leather, leather was weird, so I put it on a silicone strap. Anyway, here's the Spinnaker Hunley. This was my first automatic watch. Um, I joined Watch Gang, which is a watch subscription. $90 a month, you get a $90 watch, or you just get a watch randomly that you don't get to decide. And this was the first one I got, and I immediately realized, this is not gonna work for me. I don't want this thing. <laughs> so <laughs> I held on to it, and it's it's grown on me, but, and for $90, I think it's, it's fair. I think that's a fair price for this. I, I mean, if you actually liked it, I think it's worth more than 90, but that's not the watch I wanted. And uh, so getting a random watch, I immediately realized that was horrible. I had paid for a whole year of random watches and I had to cancel it after the first, actually I canceled it after the second one, but 
I sold that second one immediately. I kept the Spinnaker. This is the, my first auto. I'll keep it just for that, the fact that this is my first automatic watch. But it, it actually has a ton going for it. It's got this really huge chunky crown that screws down. It's got great loom on it. It's got the Arabics. There's a, a whole lot to like about this watch, including the finish, which I've scratched, obviously. But Anyway, there's the Spinnaker Hunley. And then here's the Corju BB58 homage. Looks like it's bronze, but it is not. This is steel, not brass. Um, I put it on a, well, I guess this is a Zulu strap with actual brass on it, or with actual bronze. But here it is, the bezel is super whack. It, it feels bizarre. It's a 60 click bezel. I don't think it aligns correctly. This is obviously just a copy of Tudor. But you see the, the indexes and the hands don't match. It's pretty sloppily done. The crown does screw down. Here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist with that Zulu strap. It's all right. This next one is an homage to the Radio Mirror. Um, the crystal broke, obviously. The retailer was Galinda. It's unbranded. It's sterile. I'm not a big fan of sterile. I'll be honest. I'd prefer if they put a name on it, but this is 47 millimeters. The crystal just cracked one day. I don't even think I hit it on anything. I'm not really sure, but it had an acrylic crystal. I know you can buy replacement crystals, so I'm going to do that because I really do like this one. There's something very charming about it. There's it's kind of inexplicable, and the Panaristi can tell you all about it, I'm sure, but um, there's something about this design that's just really, really cool. Inside it has a Seagull ST36. So this is a hand-winding Seagull movement that's really, really gorgeous. Here's the winding. It has a screw-down crown. But yeah, it's got that small seconds there. The small second hand is a little too big. This is very cool watch. The sandwich dial is classic. I thought for a hundred bucks, why not? And it wears absolutely huge. Um, it's only, well, it's 47 millimeters, but it wears very large. Um, fortunately, that crown is, little, is nice and dinky. I like that. I think if it had the full crown guard, it might actually be pretty uncomfortable. The strap it came with is extremely good. Then here's Casio G-Shock with an aftermarket metal case. DM5600. It's the BBM, which has this really loud blue. But I liked it for this little blue um, ring around there. And I swapped out the, the rubber case for a metal bracelet. It's kind of a weathered PVD look. This particular bracelet is extremely uncomfortable. It pulls my hair all the time, so I don't enjoy that. But I hate wearing rubber, so I would never put it back on the rubber. The negative display is hard to see sometimes. It has good light, backlight, with um, electroluminescence. There you go. It's tactical. The Umnyashav Lodka Subterina. It's 50 millimeter. It's not really a dive watch one hand. Umyashov worked for Vostok? I don't know. I don't remember exactly. Check out my review for this for the full story on what happened there. Here it is. <clears throat> this isn't the strap it came on. This is a much better strap than the strap it came on. But here is the watch. It is a 24-hour single hand watch. So there's no minutes, no seconds. It's got very long lugs. This is the largest watch I could wear. You see I'm on the last hole here of the strap. The reason I'm on the last hole is because this watch is so big. It's a 60, I think it's 60 millimeters lug to lug. It's a 50 millimeter dial. So when you do that, the strap, this strap is designed to go with a smaller watch and so on my wrist I would maybe be on the next hole or the next hole. But this watch is so long. Um, I can only wear it on the smallest hole. 
but you can see the lugs overhang my wrist. This is a very big watch. And it's got the left hand crown that screws down. It's just, it's very weird and that's what drew, drew me to it. I was obsessed with this watch for a very long time, probably a year. I said, I just have to have it. No, you're crazy, don't get it. And then eventually I got it. It says 176 out of 255. So maybe this is kind of a Russian micro brand, but they say it's brass. It's a brass watch, very odd watch. Here's the Vostok Komandirsky. It's a 41 millimeter dive watch. This is also a 24 hour movement. I've been fascinated with Russian things for a very long time. I really like Russian watches that are quirky, that are weird, they're kind of cheap sometimes, cheap looking. Um, for some reason, Raketas cost like a thousand bucks, like a Raketa Big Zero. It's very odd because I don't think it's probably worth a thousand bucks, but this one was very cheap. This uh, Komandirsky was 66 bucks, and that's a great price for it because this bracelet is so bad. It's a very, very bad bracelet, but it's authentic, so I like it. Um, it's a weird thing. I can't fully explain. It's The quality is poor, but I like it. Look at this. It's stamped. Um, it's very rough looking, but it's, it's just designed to work and, I guess, be cheap. But it's got the acrylic crystal. It's got this... The, the insert is um, kind of covered with acrylic or something. It feels very soft, but it goes either way. It's hard to turn, so it doesn't actually get knocked out of place, but you can turn it either way. There's no clicking. It's infinitely analog here. But yeah, it's got the 24-hour movement, which is really interesting. The printing is actually a navy blue. It's not black. This thing is just so charming, and I really like it. It wears very well on the wrist. It's a little bit hair pulley, and of course there's there's no end links or anything. It's just, well, it's a straight end link. And then <laughs> they want to make it look like there's three pieces or something, but it's just one piece of metal that they, it's like a mix of polished and brushed, or maybe even just chrome coated or something. I don't know, it's, it's cheap, but I really like it nonetheless. Box three is dress watches and or sport watches. It's kind of a fine line there, but kind of sport watches on the top and dress watches down here. The first is the Cadison Day Date. It's kind of a sport watch in uh, 40 millimeters. I got this one because I wanted to look like Tony Soprano and it does the job. It's a little big. It should be a 36, but it is not. It is a 40 millimeter. It's got the Miota inside. The clasp is actually really nice. The butterfly clasp is very minimal. It's very tiny, so I actually like this a lot. Um, some of these are more chonky. This is a pretty small butterfly clasp, so it's pretty comfortable to wear. Very nice. It's very pretty. This is the Idulilun Santos Homage. It's a dress watch in 39 millimeters. I've been called out for this saying, hey, this is it's basically just a replica. And I suppose that is kind of fair point. It doesn't say anything that it shouldn't on the dial, but yeah, where's the where do you draw the line? So it's not exactly a watch to be proud of having. That appears to just be a blatant copy. But it is very beautiful, and I do enjoy wearing it. Looks really nice. This is my daughter's favorite. It's a beautiful classic design from actually Cartier, not some random Chinese company that won't put their name on the dial. But yeah, nice blue hands. I really like it. Next is a Parnas Datejust Homage. This is 40 millimeters. I got this one because I really like watching Michael Knowles, political commentator. And he has the actual Rolex Datejust in silver with the plain bezel and with the Jubilee. And it's a great combination. So I really liked how that looked on him. So I got this Parnas, which is a hundred bucks. I'm sure you can get it for cheaper. It's got this interesting clasp, which I've never seen anything quite like it, which makes taking it on and off a little bit 
difficult. There you go. We've got the Bliger Oyster Perpetual Homage. This is 36 millimeters. The Bliger. Yeah, if you want to look preppy, here's your here's your ticket to prep land. Um, the 36, as I've said in my review, this 36 millimeter actually wears very nicely. It does not feel ridiculously small. It feels fine. So that was a pleasant surprise. It is clearly just a Rolex ripoff. That's pretty much what my top row here all is. It's just Rolex ripoffs. This is a good one. Here's the Pagani Design Oyster Perpetual Homage in that Tiffany blue color. This is 40 millimeters. And from the infamous Tiffany blue craze, here's the Pagani Design PD 1690. And it's an Oyster Perpetual Homage. Here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. I think it's a good size. 40 millimeters is a good size for me. That 36, though, the Bleiger actually felt really nice, too. So there's a place for different sizes of watches, for sure. I overpaid for this one by a lot. It's got a cool design on the back. I'll show you a better picture of it so you can see. But yeah, that's it. And then here's the Cadison Day Date. I kind of consider this more of a dress watch, but I suppose it's a sport watch as well. This is in the blue. It's the same as that gold one, it's just the blue one. And this is 40 millimeters. So I have two Cadison day dates. This plain stainless steel case with no PVD coating. Again, I really like the clasp, it's very comfortable. I just wear this one really loose because you can't get as tight of a fit. But here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. This is the Seiko Le Grand Sport. It is 30 millimeters across. And this Seiko was gifted to me by a friend a long time ago. I wore it every single day until the battery died and then got the battery replaced, wore it every single day until the battery died. So I wore this for years. Oh, I know what it was. I bought another that looked like it. I was too lazy to have the battery replaced, so I bought a Kenneth Cole watch and that watch fell apart so quickly. I, that's when I learned that some watch brands are better than others. Seiko is, is a lot better than Kenneth Cole. And of course, eventually I replaced the battery again, and here it is. Here's the Lobini Moon Phase. This is a dress watch, 42 millimeters in diameter, with the moon on the date wheel instead of an actual moon phase movement, but you get much the same effect. I've reviewed this if you'd like to check out. Um, it's got this deployant clasp here. Let me show you on my wrist my seven and a quarter inch wrist. Let you see what this looks like. Here we go. It's pretty good size. A little bit thick, not too crazy. There's a review of this one as well. The Vostok Retro 38 millimeter dress watch, hand winding. This is so charming and so inexpensive. I got this one for $59. The case is brass. It has an in-house movement and in-house hand winding movement with a small seconds complication. It's fairly accurate. For me that that's not that important with a dress watch because I usually just wear them one day or for one event really. I don't usually even wear a dress watch all day long but I'll wear this for a concert symphony concert or something like that. But you can see it here on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. It's very good size for a dress watch. And I have a review of this one as well. Here's the Seiko metronome watch. It is 37, it's 36 and a half, but I'll just call it 37 millimeter dress watch. The Seiko SMW 003A. This is such a cool watch, I have to show you. Okay, so it's called a metronome watch. So its first function here is a metronome. It's beating at 76 beats per minute. I can tap up here to hear the sound. 
If I want to increase the tempo, here, let's go to 96. There you go. And then you can also have a reference pitch. Here's A442. Oh, there's B flat, sorry. Let's go back to time tape. There's A440, ah. And then back to timekeeping. There's no second on this. It's very dinky feeling. Um, it's very small. I think they designed this for women and children as well as men. But okay, I actually made it a little tight just now, but it does look kind of dinky. It's not too crazy though. It, you can pull it off, especially as a dress watch, but there you go. Pretty cool watch from Seiko. And here is the Give, Give Turbion watch. There we go, fire that Turbion up. This one is 42 millimeters, or GIV. Let me move the hand out of there, the way. Has Clou de Paris on the dial, or some sort of some sort of guilloche going on there. Um, the hands are probably not actually blued with heat treating. But yeah, it's got a tourbillon movement there. Now, it's hard for me to figure out who made this movement. The movement's actually really plain on the back. There's not really much to see at all. This humongous plate covers everything. It looks a little bit rough. This is an, an, one of those Chinese ones that is not exactly copying something else. And it's not like this particular model is super popular. Breguet, it's, I mean, it's totally aping Breguet here. Breguet has a different case shape entirely. So this is its own thing. It's pretty cool. Here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. It's a little bit thick for a dress watch, but it's very cool. Here's the final box. I'm calling it quirky slash overflow. It's mostly overflow with a few quirky ones. First one is the Didun Design. They did not design anything here, but here's the Didun Design uh, Royal Oak Homage. This is 43 millimeters. I picked this up because I really like the look of the Royal Oak, but I could not afford it. And I wanted the bracelet. So that's why I picked this one up. Because many of these don't really try to match the bracelet, but this one does. It's not a ton to say about it. It's pretty sloppily. Pretty sloppily done, but I like it. Can't really find them anymore. There's a review of this one. And here is the William L. Step Case. It's kind of a, oof, sorry about the dust. It's kind of a fashion watch in an everyday style. There's no date on it. It's 42 millimeters. I picked up this one because I was trying to use up what was left in my watch gang money. It's actually kind of nice. It's not too bad. Not much to say about it. No second hand, no date. Looks pretty plain. Here it is on my wrist. Here's the GOEO Avenger. It's a pilot chronograph. 48 millimeters. I'm embarrassed by this one. I'm very embarrassed that I have it. Um, I thought it was an homage. The product listing had it saying GOEO, GOEO Avenger. But then when I ordered it, it said something else on the dial, which I covered up with GOEO Avenger. So I definitely am embarrassed by this one. But here it is. It was a mistake. Um, I guess when you're ordering watches on AliExpress, really check the reviews. And if there's no reviews and there's no listings of people who actually received it, just don't buy it. Um, if I had seen that somebody bought this and it said something on the dial other than this, I just would not have bought it. I was really upset about it. I asked for a refund and they would not give it to me. And then the product listing went down and it's nowhere to be seen from. So. I think this might be made of brass instead of steel. But yeah, it was 
it's definitely a waste that I got this a waste of money. I don't like wearing it. Maybe someday I'll save up for the real Avenger, save the $10,000 or whatever it is. Here it is on my wrist. Tried to get the markings off with the Dremel tool. Looks horrible. There it is. Here is the Mr. Jones Mare Adesso. This one is 38 millimeters. I'm quite fond of this one. I picked it up after I received an award at work and I spent some of the award on this watch. Here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. Came with a different band that was horrible, so I swapped it out for the tweed. I really, really like this one. It's a jump hour. So the, the dolphin goes around the dial. I'll show you. This is a jump hour, so as time advances, this dolphin will go around indicating the minutes, and when it passes, then the hour will jump over. The hour is indicated with that little number. Very, very cool piece. Crown is really annoying. This is the Geek Think Creative. It's just a quirky kind of deal. I always forget which one's the hour and which one's the minute. So I suppose it's almost 9.45 or it is 8.50 almost. I think the battery stopped on this thing. This is a quirky watch that is 40 millimeters. I picked this one up because it just looks cool. Just have a little bit of fun. But, okay, so the light one is the minutes, and the dark one is the hours. So now it's 10 o'clock, 10.15, 10.30, you get it. Pretty cool. Here it is on my wrist. The band is not what came with it. Tayrock Boundless. It's a racing chronograph, I suppose, or just a, I don't know, some kind of chronograph. It's 42 millimeters. It's another one of these uh, watch gang hitters. Hitters with an SH at the beginning. This is not a great watch. <laughs> it's, it's garbage. It looked okay in the product listing, and then it looked horrible when I arrived. Um, it did have a bracelet on it. The bracelet was very uncomfortable, so that's why I put it on a strap. I tried to, to lean into the racing thing and get this kind of like carbon fiber basket weavy sort of thing. It just looks really low quality. Black and gold would look great together, but this just looks cheap. You can see how cheap the metal is just from far off. I don't know why that is. I don't know how it works, but you can just see this is super cheap. This cost them like 10 bucks. Here's the beret chronograph. Beret chronograph. It's 40 millimeters. I picked this beret chronograph up from Amazon. It's just going to be for actually my brother-in-law. I was just going to give it to him as a present, but then my watch broke that I had, my smartwatch, and I started wearing this one. I, I changed my mind about giving it to my, my brother-in-law as a present, and I, I started wearing this one, and I really liked it. It's the first watch I ever had with Sapphire. I noticed I never scratched it. It always looked so good. It came on a brown leather strap that I totally destroyed, and it looked really shabby by the end. So I took this from the Spinnaker dive watch, and I just liked how it looked. So I kept it on there. But this is actually a really cool chronograph. It works fine. Yeah, no real problems with how the chronograph works or anything. I don't use it for anything, but the chronograph works. It's got these applied indices. I actually kind of like this one. For the price, it's, it looks nice. This special one is a Timex of unknown origin. I don't know what this title is, what it's called. I treat it as a beater watch. It's 40 millimeters. My lovely wife gave this Timex to me as a present. I wore it for years, every single day, until the battery died. And then it just sat in a drawer, and I got a smartwatch, and I wore that for a long time. But I wore this thing so much, it is really scratched. I just wore it every single day. The crystal is really scratched. I replaced the bracelet with just an AliExpress bracelet. The original bracelet that was on this was horrible. It was one of these hair pulley ones. It was elastic, so it would just slip over the wrist. 
and it just ripped my sh my hairs out like crazy but i still wore it all the time the indiglo is really nice on this i'll throw up a shot of that so you can see very thin just an everyday watch and here is a Raketa World Time watch <clears throat> with kind of mismatched dial. So it's kind of a Franken watch here. It's definitely a Franken watch. And there's a lot of dust inside of it. It's got the wrong dial on it. Somebody swapped these out. This looks better than what Raketa did. Actually, the dial belongs to an original watch. It's just the disc that's different. Um, the disc should be like have numbers on it, but instead it's got the cities. So like at the top here, you see at 24, New York, New York, and then Chicago. It shouldn't have New York and Chicago on there. It should be like numbers. So it's a bit of a Franken watch. I'll show it to you on the wrist. I'm sure I paid too much for this, 130. Um, I didn't know what I was doing. I thought it looked really cool, so I bought it. It's a hand-winding watch, and it's got the tiniest crown on the planet, so that's no fun. It's 24-hour movement, that's pretty fun. It's very confusing to try to read the time, but that's what you get. And here's what the in-house movement looks like. The crystal just pops off the front. It's very loose, so stuff can just get in there. You can almost remove it with a fingernail. So that's the state of my collection. I hope you enjoyed watching it. God has really blessed me with um, so much abundance in my life. Watches being one of those things. He's blessed me with a lot of financial success I can use to support church and other charities. My family can live comfortably and I'm so grateful to God for those gifts. So that's the end of the state of the collection. If you want to know more about any of the particular watches, I've done reviews on most of them, so. <laughs> I've done a lot of uh, reviews on them, so in the description I will list all the watches and then I'll put links next to the ones that have reviews. Hopefully there's enough room for all that information. I will find out. Now that I've shared my, my collection with everybody, um, I like to do Bible time. I always have some Bible stuff at the end of my videos, and today, with Christmas right around the corner, I just thought it would be nice to read Luke 2. So here's Luke 2 in the English Standard Version. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was the governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee to the town of Nazareth to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Prophecy came true. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb, or Yeshua in Hebrew.
And when the time came for the purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And his father, Jesus' his father, and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak to him, to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. So that's what we celebrate at Christmas. Um, well, we celebrate a little bit more, but this is the birth of Jesus, and then um, his circumcision, and then you know his, his dedication at the, uh, the temple. What does it say? Purification according to the law of Moses. Um, presenting Jesus to the Lord, since he's the firstborn son. It's a very joyous time, and you can tell from the passage that Simeon was very excited. He was told that he would get to see Christ, Christ meaning the, uh, the Messiah. Prophets in the, in the Torah predicted that there would be a Messiah who would come and take away the sin of the world, who would redeem Israel. And that's exactly what Jesus did. If you're a Christian, you believe he's going to come again. His work is not complete. This is where Jews and Christians differ because Jews say when, when Messiah comes, that's everything is done at that point. However, Jesus came and then he left. He, he came, he was crucified, he died, and he resurrected. He came back to life in his physical body and walked around and did a whole lot more important things. And then he left. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God. But he will be back. And so that, that final stage is, has not yet happened. We're, we're in, the, in the fourth stage of the whole, you know, the creation of the earth, all these, these stages of things that happen. The creation, the fall, the, the time of Jesus. And then the fourth stage, the era of the church. And we're in the era of the church now, where the church is preaching and trying to establish God's kingdom here on earth and not succeeding entirely, obviously, but the goal of the church is to bring in the kingdom of heaven and to share the gospel with everyone we possibly can and to build up God's people and to, to win souls for heaven, just win souls for Christ, to follow Jesus. My prayer for you, if you're listening to this, is that you would decide to follow Jesus and join me as a brother or sister in Christ and we can live forever in heaven with our Lord Jesus and along with everyone else, all of God's children, live eternally in worship of God and where we'll ex experience pleasures forevermore, as the Bible tells us. So Christmas is about the coming of the Lord. He already, you know, he came, but, but we kind of look forward to his second coming as well. There's a lot of this stuff wrapped up in Christmas. Um, we talk about hope. Hope means I know Jesus is coming back. I know Jesus has saved me. And I'm eagerly anticipating all of that. I'm anticipating that union with God in heaven, in, in my second life, essentially, my eternal life. So I'll close with a, a prayer. 
Lord, thank you so much for the season of Christmas. And I pray that everyone who's celebrating Christmas would remember that Jesus is the reason for the season, that um, Jesus is our salvation and our hope and all of our future. And I just pray that everyone would accept Jesus and believe and be saved. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always and in every way. The Lord be with you all. See you next time. And I know that he'll be with me.